Here's a daily schedule that will sound familiar to a lot of ladies out there. Wake the kids and get them ready for school. Battle traffic. Get that presentation done. Shop online for your parents' anniversary and schedule your kids' dentist appointments during your lunch break. Ignore some tightness in your chest. Take the kids to soccer practice. Make dinner. Put the kids to bed and give your spouse an as short as you can get away with it so he doesn't feel neglected and get pouty back rub. But at the end of the day, as you worry about the unpaid bills and the growing pile of laundry, you realize something significant has been neglected. That tightness you felt earlier and, in fact, your overall heart health. This is unfortunate because heart disease is a huge problem for women. So it's become more apparent the past 10 years or so that the cardiac risk in women has been going up while the risk in men has been coming down. And that's caused the American Heart Association to start this campaign more than 10 years ago called Go Red to let women become aware that heart disease is not just a disease of men, that it's becoming an epidemic in women, and in fact kills one in three women throughout their lifetime versus the fear, anxiety, and overwhelming uh, awareness of breast cancer, which is one in 30 women per lifetime that may die from it. So it's 10 times more likely that the average woman might die in their lifetime of cardiovascular disease as opposed to breast cancer, which has gotten so much uh, appropriate press through the years and so much anxiety. Heart disease is the number one killer of women over age 65, and it affects more women than men and has for as long as we've been looking at mortality rates nationally. Women have to be aware of their risk factors from a young age. The American Heart Association recommends women start getting their cholesterol regularly checked at age 20 or younger if they have a strong family history. So the common cause of heart disease in women uh, is really the same as men. So the risk factors that we think about, high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, smoking, family history, inactivity and weight, all these risk factors that men are supposed to work on is the same for women. And so it shouldn't be taken for granted in women as well that if the blood pressure is going up, cholesterol is going up, that these things need to be addressed. The difference for a lot of women is that before menopause, cholesterol may have not been as big an issue. The natural estrogens are largely protective, not completely, but are largely protective. But after menopause, women very, very quickly catch up to the men. And now we see that they're exceeding the risk of men in recent years. One of the reasons why women don't recognize the risk of heart disease is that they, more often than men, will suffer from symptoms outside the cartoon-like clutching chest pain we're all familiar with. 64% of women who die suddenly from coronary heart disease had no previous symptoms. It's the subtle signs that are often misunderstood, such as extreme fatigue, shortness of breath, and upper abdominal pain. So it's typically a pressure, a tightness, a heaviness in the chest, may radiate to the neck, may radiate down the, the arm. It may be with a cold sweat, a sense of nausea, vomiting, feeling faint. That may also cause women to pass on the symptoms or just because they think they can't be at risk of heart disease, uh, maybe don't appreciate that, that funny feeling in the chest, the funny feeling in the jaw or the ears sometimes that may be worse with exertion, could be a warning sign, uh, a, a symptom radiating down the arm, more commonly the left, but sometimes the right arm, uh, occurring with exertion, but sometimes even at rest, can be a warning sign. And the statement that the American Heart Association wants to get out, the message, is that if you have anything that's the slightest bit suspicious, to be in touch with your physician, if the symptoms are progressive or severe, to call 911 because to make a mistake and miss on the symptoms could be a dangerous situation, even life-threatening, to pass on the warning signs. And although ignoring that little bit of chest pain so you can help Junior with his fractions might seem like the right decision now, it can become a problem later on if the pain turns into something more sinister. So it's important for women to team up with their doctors and prevent heart disease from developing in the first place. In the past 30 years, on average, has been a reduction in risk. In the past 10 years, just months ago, the New York Times had a front page article, 38% reduction in cardiovascular risk in the United States. Unfortunately, men, more than women, took advantage of that. 
So women can also prevent risk of coronary vascular disease. Being aware if your blood pressure is elevated, being aware if your cholesterol is elevated, being aware if you're becoming a diabetic, making absolutely sure you're a non-smoker, or if you are a smoker, doing everything humanly possible to become a non-smoker. Exercise, just the most modest amount of exercise, 30 minutes, three, four, five days a week, can prevent diabetes, lower your cholesterol, strengthen your bones, and just plain old feel better. So modest exercise, it doesn't have to be the New York Marathon, modest exercise is dramatically beneficial at preventing heart disease, controlling blood pressure, helping cholesterol, preventing diabetes. So there's lots of ways to prevent heart disease, and it is working. So remember ladies, it's never too late to start caring for your heart. Start by making those healthy lifestyle changes. Each good choice strengthens your heart. Keep track of your typical daily diet and work to eliminate any foods high in cholesterol and saturated fat. When in doubt, fruits and vegetables are best. Also, try to get some form of exercise every day. For those of you who claim that you're too busy to work out at the gym, just taking the stairs instead of the elevator or walking for a half an hour instead of watching a primetime sitcom is enough to make a difference. And then maybe at the end of the day, you can say to your husband, hey, I'm more at risk for heart disease than you, so why don't you give me the backup for once and make it a good one? I'm Dr. Mike Rosen, and you're watching the eHealth Network. Stay healthy.